Okay, I have my wine topper and we're gonna roll on a base coat. I like to roll on base coats more than doing a brush because you get a real smooth coverage. And here's a really nice si small size two inch foam roller. And it just presses it so it just gets right on the whole edge and everything. Okay, I like, the, I think the cleanup is the only thing only thing I don't like. If you want a little bit of tooth so that you can dry brush, then you leave it, you just roll it less. The more you roll, the smoother it gets. Okay, then when you're doing the edges, the same thing. You can go right on those edges and it makes a nice base coat. And then make sure you check for drips on both sides so that you get them smoothed out. Okay, I'm going to prep my wine glasses, and I want to just say a note about the wine glasses. Um, we offer on our website um, a special wine glass that is made out of a mineral or a magnesium um, glass. And what that means is it is extraordinarily hard. It has a fantastic non-rimmed lip so that you can actually taste the wine better. Um, and it is, I've had them in my house now, and I love to drink my wine, um, for about, gosh, maybe almost a year, and we haven't broken a single wine glass, and we've had parties outside, dogs chasing around, all that kind of stuff. And um, also, my husband got out um, a bottle of wine, he's pouring the glass, and then the glass slipped through, and it bounced off the ground, and he managed to catch it kind of sloppily, and it splatted all around, but the wine glass didn't break. So this is a fantastic glass, it's durable. I choose to paint on a glass like this rather than a cheap Walmart glass um, or a big box store glass because I know that my artwork is going to last. I would hate to do my pattern and design on here and then have the artwork um, break and then people have a set of four, then a set of three, and then they have one wine glass with the, the flowers or whatever painted on it. So um, anyway, they're worth the money because they don't break. They taste better. That wine actually does taste better and it's just fantastic. Okay, in order to prep our wine glasses for painting, we are going to stand them up and we're just going to wipe them down with alcohol wherever you're going to paint. It's going to remove all the grease and the grime and things like that. And then you want to not handle them so much. Um, you could wear gloves if you wanted to, especially for the beginning part where we're going to tape and stuff, but just be careful. This is just an easy little wipe down. Allow it to dry and then we can get to our painting. The next challenge for doing a project like the one I'm going to do is getting the line on there straight because this has got a very, very, very um, strong graphic line. What I'm going to do is drop down the rim about, whoops, I'm going to hold this measuring. This is a flexible um, ruler. I could do it on the outside if I wanted to. Actually, maybe that's easier. Okay, and I'm going to drop it down three quarters of an inch so that people don't put their lips on the paint. And then I think we'll do, let's see how far, I think maybe down to the three. We'll see how that looks. So we'll go down our inch and a half. I'm using just a marker, and if you want to, you can use rubbing alcohol to take the marks off. But you just make those on your glass. Maybe in four spots. I do that one in the wrong, I think I did that in the wrong spot. Poopy head, I did. Should never ask me to measure anything, but that just will wipe right off. You want to be careful not to wipe it off before you want it off. Okay, we'll see if that's enough marks first. We can always add more. Then we're going to use, because this is a concave glass, because it, it goes in at the top, then what we need to do is make sure that um, we have, we're going to tape this line. We want to make sure we use tape that can turn. This tape cannot turn. So we'll pull off a piece of our green stretchy tape. Okay, and we will watch the wine glass prove that my table is not level. Okay, and we'll just bend that lower piece out so that you can't, play, you don't have to play with it too much. And then we just pull and guide from dot to dot. The pulling is what allows the tape to stretch. 
You can lift it back off without any problem. And then you go back and you check for weird things like I did right there. Just not very pretty. Just want to ease it. You know, if it's a little bit cockeyed, I'd rather have it a little bit cockeyed than have it be trying too hard. So maybe we just fudge it to make it look prettier. Okay, and then we pull that down. Do a piece for the top. Just, this is where the pulling is going to be more needed because um, it's more concave here than it was down below. Ooh, that tape was just the right length. Okay, now we look at it and see that there's a big uphill thing, so maybe somebody's not such a good measurer, huh? Actually, measuring on the crooked glass surface is a really interesting um, experiment. And you could now go back and measure it just to make sure. If you're really worried about doing a high-end thing, you're going to get good at this quick. I'm going to go back one more time. I feel more comfortable eyeballing things, but I do know that most people don't have that same comfort level. Okay, and then when you get it how you want it, then you're going to bray it down with your thumbnail, or with your fingernail. Then I'm going to end up having to patch that. Okay, maybe that'll do. Okay, so bray it down with your thumbnail. Do the bottom one. Okay, and I'm going to look at this for balance. Make sure that I'm not too cockeyed in anything. Okay. And then, once I decide that I'm okay, I'm going to get out my makeup applicators. These are available at Walmart. And we're going to use the gloss enamels today. So I'll get out my black gloss enamels, which probably need to be shaken because I don't think I've used them. Okay, and this is going to need three coats. Now I'm going to do one coat tonight. And then I will repeat with another coat, um, maybe later tonight, maybe in the morning. And then I'll come back to it a little bit later. You have to let this dry. This first coat is so important because if you don't, then what happens is you end up with um, a really soft surface to paint on. And it's very easy to mar it. Okay, so what we're going to do to get a nice even painting tooth, if you try to brush on paint on glass, you will be so sorry. Because it is, it is very, very ugly. I'm just going to tap this on and make, I'm going for evenness. I don't care about coverage because if I do nice thin coats, then I will get good coverage. If I make a mistake, I can use a razor blade to scrape it off. Once you get this paint on here though, it is on there for good. So if you get a bunch of bubbles, just keep going back over it until you get uniform bubbly look. And you're just going to continue like this till you get all the way around the glass and then do the others. And I'll check back in with you when I'm getting ready to do the next coat. The neat thing about doing this step this way is that you get a really, really nice tooth that you can paint on and it no longer feels like you're painting on glass. It's you're painting on almost like a wood surface. So you can float and you can do a lot of those other techniques that if you've ever painted on glass before, you know that you cannot do. So this is um, just a much, much nicer way of painting. Okay, so I'm going to go back around and check for bubbles, even those out. Notice I'm not loading any more paint. Now that looks like it just needs to sit there for a second before I mess messing it, so I'll go on to my next one. Okay, I have all my little soldiers in a row here, and thankfully it is a very warm day, and my first coat on this one is completely dry. So I'm going to go into my second coat, and once again, this is getting a little bubbly. And so I'm going to want to make sure as, I going, as I'm going around that I am re-tapping on as I get all the way around 
just to make sure I get an even smoothish coat. The neat thing about this is, and I'll show you the secret at the end of the um, DVD, the neat thing about this technique is I've got a super secret thing that um, makes it kind of look like fused glass, but if you have too much texture, then it ruins the effect. So you've got to have even texture um, to get that fused glass. That fused glass is like glass that has actually you know, been baked in the high ovens and stuff like that. So we want that high-end look because that's what's going to bring you top dollar. That's what's going to impress your friends. So let's make sure that we spend a little time and create that top-end look. Okay, now I'm getting a little tacky. I can feel everything kind of pulling, so I'm just going to tap very lightly, not using as much force, just to smooth out my bubbles. I probably could go to a clean sponge. I haven't tried that, but I'm thinking that that might be a good idea. Just, I don't want to pull anything off because it is still fresh, even though it felt very dry. Okay, and there. Okay, that wasn't, see, it doesn't take too long. Okay, I went ahead to drop those bubbles down. I went ahead and changed to the clean sponge, and that is working really nicely. So if you need to get rid of the bubbles, then that is a great way to do that. Okay, I'm on my third coat. This is the simple coat because... It's just to make sure that everything is covered. It hasn't actually taken that long because I'm doing this in a hot room on a hot day. We haven't put the air conditioners back in. So, let me get that on there. Okay, I want to be real careful, so I'm going to use the clean, clean part of my sponge. And see, it's taken through a little pulling. If it's too fresh, it wants to pull. So I'm going to let that dry. But in the meantime, I don't need to worry about my edges. So what I'm going to do is show you how to take the tape off. You pull it back on itself away from the edge and it acts like a little razor blade. And it doesn't allow the paint to stick. The longer the paint gets to cure, the worse everything is for you. So I'd rather retape this later if I needed to. I usually just tape that to a table until I get. Um, okay, so pull it away from me. Make sure you're turning the glass. And anything that is uneven you can patch with a brush. It just takes a little bit more work. So there we have our lovely black glass band. Okay, I've sketched just a little bit of drawing on my, um, on my wine glass just to see kind of where I wanted to place it. And I don't think you need to sketch it first. Um, and we're going to get out Hauser Dark Green in the Gloss Enamels. Is there a bottle opener? And we're going to just take a wet, a, a dampened sponge. And let's go get you some paint here. Take a dampened sponge, smash it on the palette. And not dampened like um, wet, sopping wet um, sponge. Do it like wrung out. And then we're just going to put this green up and down, not solid. Just kind of snaking it through the middle there. Don't want too much texture. We'll look like we have fuzzy geraniums. Okay, leave some loose ends. As you're doing this, leave some black. Don't cover all the black. We want the black to be um, some of the depth like that deeply, darkly, shadowy areas. Okay, get all the way through, making sure you leave some roughly little edges, like tenderly kind of edges. And so that's gonna dry down a little bit dark. And that's already dry, that's pretty cool. And now I'll go in and just put a little bit more on top and not everywhere. Now we want this to be the third color. Anything that you mess up, you can go back with the black and tap on top of the black. So if you totally screw it up and get it too too chunky and heavy, then you can totally go back and black on top of it and just get your balance going. We're not trying to hit the same places. And just I'll repeat until I like it. Okay, and that's the look that I have. 
And now I repeat the other ones. One of the hints for making this look a little more random is you're going to twist your hand as you do this. And that is going to give you that random look. And then look at how much paint I only have on there. If the paint was covering this whole thing, then I'd get better. I'd get more coverage. So adjust your coverage for how much you think you want. Okay, I'm going to go on to a dry one. I put some water drops out here on there and dirty, dirty brush. I don't know if they call that a dirty brush or not. Um, we are going to then do a little bit more just here and there. This is even less. Just go ahead and tap on just little random highlights of it. So when we're doing this, just have little twists and touches to brighten that up. And so see how my fingers have a place to hold up here so we're not even worried about them getting into there own onto the painting surface so that things don't stick. All right, I'm going to get ready to paint some leaves. I've got my Hauser Dark Green and I've got a mix of the Hauser Medium Green and I wanted to brighten it so I've got Festive Green. The um, gloss enamels come in a very limited palette so um, we have to kind of do a little brush mixing and so what I'm wanting is just to brighten up the Hauser Dark Green. So I'm just dirty brush mixing. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm just going to use my filbert brush and I'm just going to put little kind of connected circles. So you'll have a pattern and you can do it that way, but if you can see, I'm not doing too much rocket science here. So you'll have a pattern. Okay, just want to spread them around as we go, getting a little bit of a reflection so you'll adjust yours so that you don't reflect. As soon as we get, let's see if I can't get rid of that. That's darker, but okay. So you kind of connect it. Don't make them too polka dotty, or they won't be very pretty. And so barely showing up. See how they're not screaming at you. And so notice that there's like a, a little swish, a little swish, a little swish, smaller, smaller. So they are little groups and bodies of things. Kind of meandering along. Looks like they were cascading. This is just the, the foundation. We've got to put that background filler fluff stuff back in there with the leaves that... Um, leaves that are supporting the leaves that'll be on top. Okay, so this is loose. Um, loose is what freaks people out mostly. So um, if you're hating it, maybe do a sample on some cardboard with black paint and stuff like that before you get going. Okay. Now I'm just going to go through and break up those ones that are just a little too tight. I'm going to rinse my brush. You want to keep your brushes rinsed with this um, this paint because this paint will um, dry really quickly and dry really hard. If you need it to not be in your brush anymore and you've waited too long, then you can use um, our brush cleaner on our website. The Windsor Newton Brush Cleaner will take it out. Okay, so now I'm going with just the two greens mixed on my palette. Let me show you what my palette looks like. So I did the dark and then I mixed these two greens right here, made a puddle, and then put my dark inside that. Okay, now I'm just into these two greens, and we'll see what we get with that. Make sure you're dry. If you're tacky wet on top of this, then it will be kind of messy, and it'll stick, and you have all kinds of problems. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is get myself some roughly edged kind of leaf shapes. I'm 
it's just supporting, it's not covering up. Okay, we're just walking our way around, building up to a brighter place. Okay, now I've got my flat brush loaded in the festive green, and I'm just going to shade the bottom, or highlight I guess, that's what I'm really doing. The bottom leaf sections, make sure they stay ruffly. Don't want it on every one. You want it on places where they might show. If you want to interject your own leaf that's not really there, you know that's fine to do too. Get them all just little clusters of things. The red is going to be where the electricity happens. And I'm floating without water. I've got a dampen brush and just, um, just side loading and it's this material is slimy enough that it's just doing what it needs to do without me pushing it too much. You could have your brush slightly damp but don't get a lot of water with this um, medium. Okay, just all the way back to the beginning. Now we have a band of leaves. Now we assess this. Like right now is a really good time to assess this because we have all these other wine glasses to do, we have to look at this and decide, is that enough green? Okay. Do I have enough greenery showing behind? You know, I may want to go back on top, get my little sponge out. And I may want to go into my festive green and expand that on all of them. Not everywhere, just somewhere. Because things as they dry, of course they darken. But now that I've got just one done, this is my opportunity. I might have to redo a step or two on this. But it's my opportunity to make sure it is as bright as I want. So on these ones that are dried, I would go in with just the festive green and brighten them just that much more. See, the nice thing about paint is, is you can always go back. Okay, now on a couple of leaves, and not everywhere, we're going to float some of Calypso Blue. Not everywhere. Some kind of random telling a story, letting your eye walk through. Kind of, to me, to symbolize kind of that dusty kind of leaf color that geraniums can get. Um, if this was a bigger piece, and you'll see this in the other geraniums that I've done, I would put a lot more details on these leaves. But there's no room for details on here. Now, if you're a detail person, you could go and do that. Notice I'm not being very careful with my floats. Notice I'm not being very careful with my floats. Just kind of randomly sticking them on there. I think it's time to see what our little flower colors are going to look like in here. So I've got out Napa Red. And get some on the tip of my number four filbert. Now this is where we're going to be really messy, messy. I'm just going to tap that on. And I kind of flat bottomed arching almost umbrella shape. Loose leaf holes. This is going to dry dark. And so some of these can be little clusters of little bits of stuff. And some of them will have two or three clusters of things. And we'll get the leaves and stuff and do that after. 
I'm going to have another cluster down here. This is upside down, so the, the arch is at the top because these are hanging flowers. I like this emptiness here, and I, I like that this is a full area. This is okay to be a little empty, but now I see this big cluster of stipple and everything up here, so that's going to be my next line of attack. The movement is really, really easy. It's just a little tipply tip. I've got kind of juicy paint on my brush. I'm leaving spots and spaces. Okay, but see how this is a section and then this is a section and now we'll move away and we'll have this be like one or two here, little guys, just growing and blooming. And then we'll have these guys down here. Maybe that'll be a nice big clustered thing. And as we move over here, this will be an upside down one. We can have somebody up here in the black. Not everywhere. If we do it everywhere, it's going to be ugly. It'll be like we got polka dotty or something. Yeah, don't be afraid to reach these guys out of their zone because that's how they grow. Notice that some of the black is showing through, and that's going to be perfect because that's going to make you feel like you've got some shading back there. got to do something here. Let's see, we'll have these guys kind of be a big cluster this way. I've got a geranium picture on my computer screen right now to inspire me so that I can tell how how they grow. So that's always a good idea to put up a couple pictures. Because even though you think you remember, sometimes you're like, oops, where did, how did that go? these guys. We're almost around so we have to start planning how we're going to transition those two together. I'm going to leave some of the green. And we can go back. I got a little bit clustery down here, so we, we're going to want to do something about that. So we inspect it and we see if anything needs to be added. So you can add filler fluff and stuff. Okay, now I'm going to let this dry because drying is going to show me how bright that really is. Okay, now we're going to go in with our Tuscan Red and we're going to put some highlights towards the tops. Very just chunky little driplets. Chunky little driplets of paint. Not everywhere. Let's leave some of these backgroundy. So let's not put it anywhere. So I'm going to look up there and see. Just little bits. Now, I don't know if you can tell on here, but I've done a little wash with yellow, which I'll show you in just a minute. Sometimes I like to test things out before I show you what I did. Okay. We can go back and we can touch these again if we need to. Yeah. So I took my four filbert and got into the yellow, which is saffron yellow. Just flattened my brush into it and then just scribbled a 
path of yellow where I wanted the sunlight coming through into my leaves. Mm -hmm. And it really, just scribbling a path of yellow, it really almost looks like a glaze. It doesn't really paint over anything. So right up through the middle where I want that to be. I'm going to get into my liner brush and my bright yellowy green. So I'm going to mix the um, festive green with the saffron yellow to make a yellow green. And then this is where we will put a stem, if I can get my paint to cooperate. Okay, so we'll have little stems coming out on some, just the ones that need holding up. Okay, not on everybody. Obviously these ones floating in the sky need to be held up by something. And have them go into different places. Don't have them all lead back to the same place. We could go with more yellow if we wanted it to be maybe showier. Just a nice brush mix. It gets too yellow, tap it out, put more green on top. stem sticking out over here I think is what helps give it a little bit of the realism. Get that a little bit closer. using water with this. Okay, now we're almost back to the beginning. The point is there's not really any right or wrong. You put them where yours need stems. Keep them out of your red flowers. Okay, next we're going to go into true red. And this is going to be, you know, if I can keep you under there, we're going to true red. This is going to be very bright. We want to keep it within the highlight that we did. Keep them kind of flower petally. This is what's going to give it its vibrancy. Keep them clustered. You want little moments of magic. You do not want them everywhere. So if I did this one and all of these and all of these, and I think it would be not moments of magic. So these can have just maybe a little bit, just leading into that story, maybe this edge, because that edge makes this little arch here. Then we'll pick it up again on the next little cluster. So maybe not everything over there. Maybe just in this little area of stuff. Okay, so it doesn't always have to make perfect sense. We just want to give highlight areas. Maybe we'll give these guys their own little show. Okay, I am almost back to the beginning. I tried pink here. I don't know if you can see it. But it's pink, but I'm going to go back over that with 
the true red. Maybe up here. Okay, time to step back from it and see how I think I'm doing. All right, I think I'm liking it, so I'm going to go into more yellow one more time. And in these areas of brightness, I'm going to, within that original yellow that I did, I'm going to brighten right like next to those flowers. Just giving it something for it to, like to make it look like that sun is what's causing those red flowers to be so vivid. Have it trail out. Like right up next to that. Let's park it right there. Okay, just scribbling. Okay, let's see how we look. Okay, I decided I wanted one more layer of highlight, so I'm mixing my yellow with my true red. And I'm giving it just a little rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, just, let me show you on the camera. Mixing my yellow with my red, and I'm giving just, just a little rub-a-dub-dub -dub where my highlights are. Just one more level of kick. If I wanted to, I could go into my yellow and put in a little bit of electricity if I wanted to sure how much of that I would do, but maybe just a little bitty touch of it. Alright, we're going to tuck in our pattern um, right into these corners. So we are going to do the same techniques that we did before, but we're going to do it on wood. And we're going to not use the um, gloss enamel paint. So we're going to use the same sponge. You can use the same brushes for either. Okay. And just, I think, a little bit more water. It's interesting that different kinds of paints um, will behave differently. So we want to make sure that we adjust according to um, the kind of paint. So in this case, we want a little bit more water. Okay, and bring it kind of down, but don't fill in that whole edge. Let's make it be a little bit looser than that. As I'm picking up a little water with my sponge, I am blotting it on a big shop towel over here so that I can not have it swimming with water. Okay, now this is going to shrink into this and that means we are not going to be able to see it very well as soon as it dries. So we're going to need to repeat. And I think it's the layers that make things beautiful. So I th don't worry about having a couple of layers on things. I, I do. I think that's what um, brings beauty to things. Okay. So wait till that dries. Okay. Now it's ready. We're ready for our next Hauser dark green. dog fur off. And this is going to be in less area. Every time you do something, cover less of an area. And what that's going to do is it's going to give bulk and less and less, and you won't know where one part starts and the other part ends. And it shall be lovely. And I'm twisting and stippling the whole time using different pressure, twisting while I'm doing this. That's the key, I think. Okay, allowed to dry. Okay, next, a little bit more water this time. I wanna see some of that loose color. Now we're gonna mix the same as we did on the other one. So we'll mix all three of these colors together. I want this to be a little bit looser. Remember, you want it airy and not base coaty. And 
remember if you get too heavy handed don't give up on it and go ahead and just you know wash it off with some water or black is a fantastic um, base coat or you can go back over with a, the same color as you used before so I could go how's it dark green to tone it down or black to just bring it back out of that stratosphere if I get too too crazy okay next we're going to keep brightening so we'll use the two but less um, less of the hazard dark and I can use the clean part of my sponge to soften things out if I want to Out of the not the brush, but the the brush. All right, let's get you in close. And now we're going to do our leaf scribbling. It's just kind of a scribbled in leaf shape. There's an awful lot of leaves on geraniums and not so many flowers, so we want to make sure that we have good leaf showage. Then we'll start getting less and less over here. Okay, we're going to float with the same technique that we did before, which was with the Fiesta Green. The only thing different about this, I think, than the wine glasses is the wine glasses we had an above and a below, meaning that the flowers needed to hang down below as well as hanging down up, you know. And so I think this is um, a little bit simpler because you don't have to worry about having so much, um, like you don't have to worry about which way things are hanging. Okay, with the same technique. This time we are using water to do the floating and stuff like that. And so now we're gonna add some blue. And you can, these are a little bit bigger, so you could give it a little bit more detail, a little bit more squigglies, those ruffly edges. Not everywhere. And pretty much probably not too much out here. Now we get out our dark red. And we do the same procedure that we did before. No water. It's just going to be kind of a heavy application just like before. And we want to pay attention. This has got a little bit more spots for us to be kind of creative about our placements. So I'm going to spend a little less time squiggling little more time thinking. Okay, I want the body of it to be over here. Okay. And some are going to be head on and some are going to be that arched canopy kind of thing. Some are just going to be a couple of those little petals. This is where you're sticking out your tongue and you're trying to figure out where you want to put things so don't forget to talk. Okay, so these are just little trailing ones. And so then if I throw in a couple of petals and stuff down here, maybe I won't highlight them at all. Just scumble in some color so it'll look like there's more of them growing. So I think we'll start with that and we'll see how we go. Okay, back at the beginning again. But what I want you to do is make sure that you are checking over the balance of your whole piece. So it should feel a little flowy. It shouldn't look clustered. Um, squint your eyes at it and see how it looks, you know, overall. Get you back in. Whoops. Okay. And now we're going to go into our brighter red, which is the Tuscan red. If you haven't used some of these colors for a while, make sure you shake them because they get separated. Okay, now this is going to be these big blobs of, and we're going to be right on top, separated so that they're not all connecty connecty. By now you 
to be a pro at geraniums. Okay, so kind of almost got it everywhere. Um, but then this is going to die down just a little bit, and then we'll make the brightest ones be right in this highlight area. Now, I am not certain that our yellow is going to act as sheer as it is. Yeah, maybe it is. I was going to say, on the palette it looks right. So now we're going to want this to be where our highlights are going to be on here, and we're just scribbling that glaze in. I'm going to thin it with just a little bit of water. Blot it. And you can't see it at all. Perfect. And too much. Find that balance here. Just get that first coat on there. The first coat's the, the scary coat. It just gives us some brightness. Okay, go back in. Concentrating it where it is the brightest. Okay, going into the true red. I keep this in my highlight zone. lean these highlights just into that central area so that these other ones just get a little bit duller and duller. Okay, so I'm gonna get Ryuk. I want to take my dark red color and use this stencil brush and I want to just create some rubbed in dark red spots to indicate that there might be more red stuff happening out there. Just as a glowy background kind of thing. We'll wait and see how much that shows and then we'll add more if we need it. I'm going to need another paper towel. Got to have a dry paper towel for this. Um, so you dip your brush, dip your brush into the paint and then dry it off real good on your paper towel. And that gives you a dry rubbing type tool. But then you can rub and you can even rub on some of the green in your flowers. And just fun growing a garden, huh? Fills it up just a little bit more. I wouldn't do this on the wine glasses. Okay, one more set of highlights. This is going to be even more concentrated, less areas. Now I'm thinking I can go in with the yellow and be a little bit more strong with a couple of really sparkly places. Okay. Just really sits nicely under there. I don't know why. Okay, now I'm wanting a little bit more of a blue-green, so I'm going to try the blue Lips of Blue in the Festive Green. On my stencil brush, rub it off. Now I don't want this too bright, so I'm just going to try rubbing it around outside. Okay, I do like that now, maybe Festive Green only. Okay. And 
adds just a little bit more something to that. Bring it into this area too. Don't let it sit out there by itself. Otherwise it'll be lonely. Okay, we mix some. Makes a really nice blue green. <clears throat> Notice I'm not aiming. I'm just getting some in there, playing. Okay, now oh, we didn't put any stems in, so our stems are already yellow with the festive green. Let's see if that gives us a little bit more geranium, geraniumy look. And more yellow. just makes that just a little more real looking. I guess we can go out here and we'll knock the green down. We'll make it be more green out here. I want to spatter. Um, I'm going to start do my spattering just like I do my shading or highlighting. I start with my darker color. So I'm going to take Calypso Blue and Hauser Green, Hauser Dark Green. Make it washy. And let's talk about how we load this. So real washy on my White Wonder brush, which is variegated and serrated so that it'll do little lines. And then I'm going to get a heavy handled brush. I always tap off on my palette. See, that's not coming out very well. Maybe I'm not thin enough yet. Okay, there we go. Then come under a piece. Anchor it here, and then wherever I'm going to want those spatters. I do that. Now if I want them specifically to land, like in this area, I'm going to change where I'm aiming. The lower down this brush is, let's get you up higher, the lower, if it's up high, then I get snow. If I bring it down low, I get more control. So. maybe in the green area. This will be our background. Always smack it off over there on the palette. Okay, that just gives us some filler fluff. And if you don't, if you jump right to the darker colors, then what happens is you get um, really stark, bright stuff and you don't want that. Now we're going to go into straight Calypso, sparingly. Dun, dun, dun. I want it within the flowers and in the leaves. There we go. It's kind of like something's in there. We're not sure what. Something's happening. See how controlled that is, though. I mean, you get some random spatters. Now, a neat little tool, I can find mine. So, a neat little tool are these little um, sharp ended, cute. Tips. They are pointy on either end, but watch what they'll do. This is kind of neat. Get the brush loaded. So if I want to go right into the middle of this mess right here, and I don't like that dot going right there, I can clean up per dot where I don't want things. And um, that is just wonderful not to have that bulky-headed Q-tip there. 
All right, now let's go into yellow. And more water. If the spatters aren't coming off your brush very well, then add more water. And we want that yellow to be in where our yellow is on our piece. Now see, this is where I'd want to come in here and eat up my erroneous spatters. I don't want them everywhere, I just want them in that yellow. More paint, more water. 80% water to 20% paint. The nice thing about it is by thinning the paint, you're also thinning its ability to, um, to be very bright. So now maybe I don't want that just giant red one right there. So I can go in and say, okay, you're off of there. And now I want them to spatter this way. So I'll do it backwards. Now I'm doing it with much stronger paint because I want to see it. And I found out that I don't spatter very well upside down and backwards. You do want to be careful because your table will get messy, everything will get messy, so you want to make sure that you're prepared for that. Okay, now I think in our basic background area, in this area, let's go for some greens. We're going to go for the black green first. <clears throat> And we're going to go for some festive green mixed. <clears throat> and this we want closer to our red areas. Okay. All right, so this is where we're at. Now I have to make some decisions about where I want to go from here. Okay, so I think, I think we need a border on this. So I'm going to use my compass and just adjust it by pulling it out and in. The neat thing about this compass is it's pen style, so everything is in this pen, including your extra leads, which are stored back here. So just adjust it, and then you just run it along your edge. And that gives you a quarter. It's about a quarter of an inch. I think I opened that up just a little bit. Okay. We're going to use our stretchy tape <clears throat> that we used on our glasses. And we are going to put on our glasses. And we're going to tape this band. It doesn't matter if it's wrinkly on that side as long as this side is smooth. And you just pull, and I'm, I'm pushing down with one hand, stretching with this hand. <clears throat> the more you need to pull, um, make it curve, the more you pull. And then we're going to give it our metal leaf adhesive. This is extra thick. You don't have to work so hard to get it to do what you want it to do. You could put some. Now I'm going to try to avoid where I put my um, flowers. I want to work around them. And then I'll probably work to create um, the look that they were spilling out over the gold. So you allow this to get sticky. Try to get sticky. 
These dark ones I'm not going to worry about. I'm going to just worry about those brighter red ones. I can go back over and paint them if I wanted to. So you, if you mess this up, then you can always go back and fix it. Okay, now we'll read our directions since um, just one even coat. Okay, and don't leave puddles. Let me wash your brush out immediately. So I'll go back and always read your directions. Like, I know how to use this product. Um, I could make it work, but I can also screw it up. And since I'm teaching how to use it, I figured I had better, you know, read those directions. And it's always a good reminder to say, hey, you know, read your instructions. Even when you're, you know, somebody's telling you how to do it, if you read the directions, you'll have just a better understanding. Okay, now I can take my, um, my tape off at this point so that we don't peel the adhesive. One time I left my tape on and the adhesive got sticky and just peeled rivers into that area. It wasn't very pretty. Okay, while I am waiting for my adhesive to dry over there. I want to make sure gold is the direction I'm going to go. So if you see me putting on gold and then you see it disappear, you'll know it's because I changed my mind. So I'm going to re-tape this band here. And now we want to be careful. If you have just painted your black the day before, then you want to make sure that you are well cured before you tape on top of the black on the glass. But I mean, I am I am secured definitely because it's been a couple days since I've done this. Okay. And then we want to tape our border. So we pinch that down. And I don't think I want a super duper big border. Okay. Oops. I think I'm going to waste a lot of tape though. <clears throat> so I'll go in here. I'm just going to estimate. I'm a pretty good estimator. So I'm just going to go ahead and guesstimate my band. I think that's going to be too thick. Let's go skinnier. Okay, maybe more like an eighth. Now we don't want to leave this on very long without, um, so we will um, get it, get one glass taped and then we'll see this and then we should know real quick whether or not we are going to do this. Okay, now my leaf is clear and so now we're going to grab our little sheet. This stuff can be kind of fun to play with and we're going to just press it on. You can use a mop brush if you would like. <clears throat> and you just tear it. It's very, very thin. Very easy to play with. You can keep a little container for all your little spare bits. You don't need to throw them away unless you just need them thrown away. Okay, and then we take a little powder puff if I can find it. Okay, this is just a little bath and body powder puff. And then we just buff that off. I'm going to take off wherever I didn't want my flowers done. Because this just looks very awkward and stuff, let's just go ahead and see if we can't make it look right before we continue. So I would take my filbert. And just go back over here. This is going to take a little bit of base coating, I think. A 
let that dry. I'll check back with you in just a second. All right, remembering my last um, statement about reading the directions. I put my tape on top of this and I went ahead and I got ready to put my adhesive on and I ended up peeling off chunks of my paint. And I'm thinking, well, gosh, I've done this all the time. Why is this? Well, I've switched paints. So while this paint is hard and it's wonderful and it won't peel off and it washes and does all that kind of stuff, I forgot, simply forgot, that um, it is one that needs 21 days to air dry and or oven cure. So I'm going to finish patching my paint job. I'm going to take the glasses down um, and put them into the oven and then we're going to retape it and we're going to see how we do. You can see I have a little bit of that um, right here. So I've just got my little sponge and I'm just patching it. And very easy to patch but um, very disappointing because I didn't read the directions. The directions very clearly say 21 days to cure. So um, anyway, so I am going to um, make sure that I read my directions. Okay, we're going to use our Viridian Green. We're going to load it on our brush and we're just going to stroke it up almost like a dry brush kind of thing, partially up, just like if we were shading. Just let it kind of scratchily end right there. We want it just a little bit darker to the middle. We don't want to steal the geranium's thunder. just gives us a little bit darker look. And I'm wanting to make a little bit of a yellow green coming out to the outer edge. So we're going to take our yellow with our festive green with a little bit of our I'm going to make a yellowy blue green kind of thing. And let's just finish these tips off a little bit more yellow green. lining you want to use lots of water otherwise things don't flow so good In order to get the really glossy look to the um, wine glass, what we did is I baked this in the oven and then um, I'm going to use DuraClear on top of it after I baked it. You read the instructions on the label so you get it right. I'll put on a nice coat of the DuraClear. You don't bake the DuraClear. Okay, just nice and even. Allow it to dry and then this will be safe for hand washing and of course never good for putting your mouth on. So um, make sure that you, if you're selling these at bazaars and stuff, you leave the room for the, um, the lip, you know, the drinking lip and that kind of thing on there. 